in Europe seeking endorsement for his war on terror. Colombia's President Álvaro Uribe has been discussing ways to liberate dozens of hostages being held by FARC rebels in his country. Among the Marxist group's captives are a number of high-profile figures, including French Colombian former presidential candidate Ingrid Betancourt. Álvaro Uribe spoke to Euronews in Brussels. Mr. President, welcome to Euronews. Tell us when do you think that Ingrid Betancourt and the other FARC hostages will be released? Some 43 kidnapped citizens, as well as Ingrid Betancourt, can be exchanged, say the guerrillas. Over the last 10 years, 750 Colombians abducted by the FARC have not been able to return home. Many of these kidnapped people have been murdered. Most recently, 11 deputies from Baje del Calca. Our security policy has seen big improvements in the fight against abductions. There have been years with 3,000 kidnapped victims. Last year, there were 230. And we're making humanitarian efforts to get captives back home, but we must be vigilant to ensure humanitarian efforts don't encourage kidnapping. What do you think about your meeting with Javier Solana? Very good, because without hesitation he once again fundamentally backed Colombia. Here in Europe, Things are clear because you've experienced the Nazis. And what FARC is doing with Colombian hostages is like what the Nazis did against the Jews. Therefore, you can understand. Maybe you should be careful with such comparisons. Don't you think this is a little exaggerated? How could you think it's exaggerated? Didn't you see the photographs of Ingrid Betancourt? Aren't you aware that members of the Colombian security forces kidnapped by the FARC 10 years ago are being held in cages or in chains? And to leave the group just for their basic needs, they have to drag each other along in chains. Public opinion reckons Nazism as an absolute evil, something that's impossible to negotiate with. So it's like you're saying you will never negotiate with the FARC. Within the absolute evil of the FARC, many innocent people do realize the error of their ways. As a matter of fact, during our period of government, more than 10,000 FARC militants have demobilized. Last year, more than 2,700 people demobilized, and just this year, 137 militants did the same. While we are tough against terrorism, we are equally generous with those people within it when they decide to change their ways. In the European Union's view, FARC should remain on the blacklist of terrorist groups. It is their problem. When the FARC changes its behavior, the Colombian government will be the first to help them take steps to peace. How? We're ready to recognize their negotiators and we will lift arrest warrants to allow them to negotiate. The Colombian government is generous, yet we can't make any mistake on the political status issue. Political status can't be given to a violent group acting against a democracy. Europe understands that. What is more, the FARC has lost territorial control. It can't administer justice, and it would be impossible to recognize it in a country with an independent and democratic legal system, which is getting stronger day by day like it is in Colombia. That group has no respect for human rights rights, or for the simple humanitarian right of sparing people cruelty. Colombia had to decide between two options. One was to follow the United States proposal of buying weapons and strengthening the army to fight against the FARC. The other was adopting the European Union's suggestion which involved being politically open to dialogue, even with the FARC. Colombia chose the first option. Do you think that it has worked? Why did it happen? 
because of my election and what did it generate? The Colombian People's Rebellion against 50 years of suffering. It can't be forgotten that FARC was given a chance for peace. For more than three years, they were able to rule over a free zone the size of Switzerland. The size of Switzerland. Then my government started the democratic security policy, as it was called. It has been strengthening the state and it has worked. Indeed, we have more than halved the number of murders, even though there still remains much to be done. We have reduced kidnappings by 85%. Last year, not a single town hall was destroyed. We've rebuilt 196 town halls. We have rebuilt 8,000 homes. We've jailed paramilitary leaders. We have returned to the state sole control of the fight against illegal military groups. What do you think of the attitude of President Chavez in general towards Latin America, not just during this crisis? The only answer is a message of respect and fondness towards our Venezuelan brothers. He has managed to isolate Colombia because he's created a group of Latin American countries that... I want to express my gratitude to all the states in the world for their backing. The endorsement yesterday from France, the support Colombia has just received from the EU. It is a democracy, that is true, yet a rather isolated democracy in Latin America. A democracy? Because it seems there's a sort of race involving many important Latin American countries, including Argentina, to move closer towards Chavez's viewpoints rather than those of Colombia. Why? What's going on in Latin America? I'm not playing that game, my dear friend. My only answer to your persistence is to repeatedly send a message of respect respect and fondness to our Venezuelan brothers and to reaffirm Colombian democratic values. We're making big efforts to support the Catholic Church and its complex work to establish a meeting zone with delegates from France, Spain and Switzerland. We are fighting to set up an international medical mission to prevent kidnapped victims' health deteriorating. We must think of the release of Ingrid Betancourt and the others. We must think of the 750 Colombian hostages unable to return home for 10 years.